Uh, now we will continue with our next uh, speaker. Up next is Nahama Nahama Nenyam Bau. She is a PhD student at the Brunham University, uh, London, uh, currently researching the topic of art, psychotherapy with refugee and the time of seeing children and their parents. She holds an MA in art therapy from the University of Haifa and a BFA from the Academy of Fine Arts in Florence, uh, as well as additional uh, training and mentalization based arts uh, psychotherapy. Trauma informed uh, expressive arts therapy and art based parental guidance and therapy. She worked for over seven years in Berlin. Uh, with at risk uh, children, children from migrant and refugee backgrounds, and uh, with their parents. She currently provides uh, mental health and uh, psychosocial support professional consultation for NGO, working with refugees, and is a research fellow at the Ailes uh, Scholarship Fund. She will give us now an important look from a practice uh, her presentation has the title co-creating safe spaces ukrainian mothers and their children uh, creating together a glimpse into the research about art therapy with refugee asylum seeking sure. children and parents Thank you. And I would like to add, she's already the second time with us. The first <laughs> time was online during Corona, COVID. <laughs> um, yes. Hi, yeah, that's fine. I'm uh, an Ashama, joining myself. And I have to admit at the beginning, and I'll see, check the time, if I can get back to it, because I do want to, but it's... Um, not easy or triggering for me. I don't know if triggering is the right word, but I haven't presented since the 7th of October. Um, I'm Israeli, I live in Berlin, and I've worked with refugees and asylum seekers and migrant children of migrant background in Berlin since um, 2014. So there were a lot of interesting things to hear, and it um, hit home in various ways, and I will try to get back to it. Um, also, um, I have a lot of, um, I, um, Martina already nicely presented me, but I have a lot of connections to different things. So I, I, I will first explain a little bit about Israel where I worked, but unfortunately will not have the time to go into my clinical experience, rather I'm going to go a little more into the research. Um, and, uh, um, <laughs> Yeah, right. Important to say is that I haven't been working as a therapist in the past two, three years since I started doing my research. Um, so, so my that's why I'm presenting my my um, research right now because my experience with Ukrainian refugees primarily through the research, whereas I worked uh, um, in the years before through Israel. Um, uh, with Syrian, Afghani, Iraqi, Eritrean, a variety of refugees. I started working just about when the big wave of Syrian refugees came. Um, uh, so this obviously affected my work and what I will present a little bit about the Ukrainian refugees um, is in collaboration with Israel where I work. Um, but again, the experiences through research and um, collaborating partners that have worked therapeutically or at least on a psychosocial level with refugees. What you see here is a, my research. Um, what I'm going to try to do, because there are so many different aspects, is just to kind of map uh, where I'm taking you and not go into detail about everything. Um, so my research really focuses on art therapy with refugees and asylum seekers. I initially started it by focusing only on Germany but uh, ended up opening it up um, more internationally. So I've interviewed our therapists working with refugees, um, not only in Germany, uh, but rather around the world. Um, it's a complex, it's a um, complex intervention development. It's the um, Medical Research Council in the UK recommendation for a phased approach um, to develop complex interventions. So, um, 
Therefore, it is mixed methods and it is multiple samples. And that's what makes this mapping a little more complicated. So to situate you, um, I'm at the end of the model modeling phase, which focused on um, online surveys, uh, focus groups, and uh, parent-child workshops. The acceptability study is something I have yet to done and about to do. Um, the parent workshop, uh, child workshops were based on um, the focus groups I did with our therapists working with a population of a few parents, um, uh, refugee and asylum seeking parents. That is where I um, did workshops with Ukrainian mothers. Um, the samples, the first three samples are the ones that I've um, engaged in surveys and uh, focus groups. So I've had 37 um, uh, art therapists that participated. Uh, I've had about um, six to eight, don't remember exactly, uh, refugee and asylum seeking parents who only participated in focus groups. And um, this part of the short parent child workshops, with it, which is an element of practice that I was trying to um, uh, research about uh, is the only part where children were involved as well. So I was trying to be very careful about that um, as much as I can, I'll explain. Um, I won't have a lot of time talking about Israel, Germany. Um, it is not the only place where I worked with this population. But it is, um, I've worked uh, with Israel since uh, 2000, beginning of 2017. And um, uh, I'm representing them in the sense that I'm, I've collaborated with them uh, for the research and worked. Um, I'm still consulting, uh, doing some consultancy for them and worked in the past with them. We have a connection to Centrum Oberleben, so I imagined also that some of the details I will not have to go <laughs> into because they probably will be presented in the previous um, uh, presentation. Um, we focus uh, primarily much more on the stabilization side and the psychosocial support uh, on a uh, multiple level. It was founded in 2016 in response to the influx of refugees. Um, it focuses on empowering and strengthening um, individuals and communities. Um, it combines uh, mental health, psychosocial support um, um, with integration work and immediate humanitarian aid um and uh initially the projects were in Germany and then they've expanded based on the um expertise accumulated to other countries such as uh, Greece, uh, then Ukraine, Romania. So that was um relatively recent. Um and very uh, importantly, um I can attest as someone who's worked there for years, um one of the essences of the way Israel works is the diverse team that is really an emphasis in hiring as much as possible, people from the same background when that's possible, uh, engaging in empowerment projects that are not the psychosocial side, we, we have different departments, um, uh, which ends up creating a situation where people from different religions, backgrounds, languages are working together and assist each other in this work. Um, specifically, Israel has a Ukraine project since right from the end of the war, 2022. I can say very personally that I got a, a, a tip about the war coming up because the, the 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 request, the need was there in January, so it was already clear something was cooking. If anyone was um, alert to it, uh, and again here is sim similarly the uh, approach is holistic. It includes psychosocial support on a very basic stabilizing level, uh, including art therapy, which is uh, my profession. Uh, there's capacity building based on experiences uh, by the team and expertise in the team. And there's also, as I mentioned, again, the empowerment and social participation projects, which are not social, social support, but more uh, involving around um, uh, community activity and especially uh, multiplication. So um, uh, assisting uh, refugees themselves uh, to then create their own projects that help their own and other communities and that way multiplying the project. I'm not going to get into that. That is the side, uh, again, the mapping of it. 
Um, I, so I, I removed a lot of slides about background because I knew that someone else would touch background and I also won't have time to talk a lot about trauma. Um, what I do want, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, note this because I had a different slide when I started presenting my uh, um, project. I think it was the 2021 statistics. In the 2021 statistics looking at Europe, specifically in Germany, there were more accompanied minors and there were unaccompanied minors. And in the past two years, just checking the past few months, this number changed. And there are actually more unaccompanied minors. Again, just like um, said before, they are primarily from older ages, so 14 and up. And uh, under 14, um, obviously, there are more accompanied children. Um, still, uh, the amount of children um, who are with asylum seekers and refugees are uh, larger percentage-wise among this population than the regular population. Um, there are a lot of children on the move, so to speak. And this is where, again, I'm not going to go deep into my clinical experience, but this is where I draw my um, push uh, to research specifically engagement of parents in therapy and in contact with parents. Because working with children, I found it very, very difficult to have all the different uh, structural, uh, language, um, cultural barriers, all the issues to reach parents where I thought that ethically, uh, from my perspective, and also for the um, work to be uh, successful, the engagement with parents is, um, in my mind, essential. Um, also, we heard last night, I really enjoyed the presentations last night, and I studied in Israel, my master's is in Israel, my training is there. Um, uh, there is no question based on my training and experience in Israel that parents have to be part and involved in the process. I wish this was self-evident. It is not always self-evident. Um, again, I don't have time to touch on a lot of aspects. I both researched and worked with Syrian, Afghani, um, Eritrean as examples, uh, refugees. Uh, I do not have the time to get into all the differences, but there are some significant differences that I had to um, understand and focus on when doing these workshops with Ukrainian refugees. Um, one uh, significant aspect, there are legal significant aspects. There is a difference in the legal, um, uh, um, the permits uh, and, and the knowledge of how long uh, someone has a permit and is going to stay. Uh, it, it's slightly different. There's also a ge geographical difference. There, there's more of the ability to go back and forth to Ukraine. Um, so there's on the one hand a little bit more stability. There's a knowledge. There's a year or two where there's a permit. On the other hand, it's a slightly different permit, and some refugees actually express the wish to go back. So it's mixed. Importantly, I think a lot of people working with, with the population at least know this, but um, a lot of the refugees are women. Men uh, under a certain age are not allowed to leave Ukraine uh, because they're expected to be, or they are drafted to the army. Uh, and there are a lot of women with uh, children. And that's why the workshops that I did focused specifically on uh, uh, mothers, there were no fathers in the workshops. Again, that time later, I did work with fathers with other populations, so it's very interesting, but here specifically mothers only, and there's an effect to that, you know, they have often their partner is away, there's a separation in the family, this uh, affects what they, their needs are, or how they react to an art therapist working with their child or trying to engage with them. Um, Art therapy with refugees, there are different approaches and there are different um, aspects, things to talk about. Um, a lot of art therapists like me will tell you that one of the most essential parts where art therapy contributes to this work is the nonverbal aspect. There are um, very different channels to, to tap into when it comes to rather than speaking, creating and doing something different. Um, it can be very powerful, at times I would argue even more powerful than words and therefore must also be treated with caution because triggering can happen not only through discussion and words. 
Uh, and essentially, we work also on the stabilization cycle, uh, social um, um, phase of things, so to speak. I've done open studios and small groups where deep trauma work is not possible. However, um, uh, the, the, the deep, the belief that also connects a lot of different approaches in our therapy is uh, simply the idea that by providing this uh, ability to work non-verbally uh, and to have a non-judgmental, safe, accepting environment that is also through the art materials and the studio presented in a way that is safe um, is helpful. Um, that sort of short term. To give you a very quick graphic idea, when we're talking about our therapy, it's often very easy to describe uh, rather than the relationship being only therapist client, it's a triangle described, described as a triangle relationship, artwork client therapist. Um, however, again, my focus primarily is parents and how parents are in, uh, engaged. This is Generally speaking, especially in our therapy, parent-child uh, psychotherapy is a relatively newly researched field. It's not that parents were not considered important before, but still, uh, in terms of research, there's a lot of new, a, a lot of new approaches uh, out there. And just to um, give an overview uh, um, of of some main ways in which therapists can work. With parents, I've divided in, into parental training and counseling, or psychoeducation, working with only parents, not the children, dyadic parent child art therapy, where the work involves the child and the parent. And then there's family art therapy, where it's a more complex dynamic. This I didn't touch on. When it comes to my research, especially when speaking to um, art therapists and how they work in different projects, uh, I've narrow down the, the the definition of what engaging parents is to any contact with parents because it is not a given that there is contact. Unfortunately, it's not a given. And therefore, when I was asking our therapist, the question is, how at all do you engage with parents? What contact do you have with them? So it's not a triangular relationship. It's a much more complicated relationship. Um, uh, then it becomes much more complex. There's artwork therapist, child, parent. Both parents, if both parents are, are there, not with the Ukrainian um, sample that I was um, doing workshops with. And of course, it becomes even more complex when similar to uh, the pre previous presentation, uh, there's a lot of uh, interdisciplinary work, a lot of work with other professionals, uh, systemic work, which is pretty essential when it comes to um, to working on it with a specific child or specifically with children. Um, Again, this is not, uh, we don't have a lot of time to talk about uh, what our therapist said, but one thing that's important that I do want to say is coming out of the surveys and the interviews and focus groups, uh, language barriers was a very essential issue for our therapists when it comes to having any contact or engagement with parents. And I'm just going to throw out an anecdote. I don't have the quotes for it here, but um, uh, two of the therapists that I interviewed were Ukrainian and had worked previously with other populations and then suddenly worked with Ukrainians. And uh, when we talked about it, when asked about it, um, although maybe my automatic assumption is, well, great, if you know the culture, you know the language, it must be easier. And the response was not always. There's more expectation. They, there's more sort of um, thrown at them, so to speak, uh, because, oh, you get me, so maybe you can also help me with this, this, and that, if to paraphrase very briefly. And also, of course, there's the trauma of the of the um, therapists themselves. They have families sometimes where they have their own trauma. Um, in the Jewish community, it's even twofold. One of the um, um, ther one of therapists that helped with the research was both Jewish and Ukrainian and had people affected in both countries since the 7th of October. So again, I won't go into it too deeply. What I want to talk about is about the workshops, which is based on sort of my, based on the collection, the previous collection of, of data, um, just I, I made short workshops to um, try to um, sort of um, give a little experience of the possibilities of the kind of work with parents. And so what I ended up doing was doing one workshop that involved a joint parent-child painting. Painting, uh, It's a specific procedure um, by a professor that I know in Haifa University, Kevin Gavon. And um, 
usually often it's done one on one, but in this scenario it was done in a group with uh, parents pairs working uh, separately. Um, one was more psychoeducational focused and for parents only, and the third um, was online and engaged both parents and children, where they created and they spoke about their what they created. Um, I know I don't have a lot of time, so I, I, I would love to, I, I'm just going to give you a little bit of some uh, some ideas of what came out. I also emphasize, and this is where maybe if I have a few minutes, I want to get back to a very personal reflection. Um, uh, these workshops took place, um, this specific workshop happened a week after the 7th of October. It was planned for a long time. It takes a long time to uh, could do the collaboration, reach the participants, find the people that will come, people that will come for three workshops, et cetera, et cetera. It took a very long time. And I was also in maternity leave as well. Um, and finally, we planned it and we had a group of mothers that were going to come for the workshop. 7th of October happened and um, it happened on a Friday and this workshop and um, I left the city on that day. Um, we can get into why. <laughs> on that day, there was a threat by Hamas uh, that went globally uh, that said, uh, you know, to target uh, on that specific Friday to target any Jews. I have three children, one of them baby, two in Jewish schools, uh, and potentially uh, being also the granddaughter of Holocaust survivors and of refugees, uh, very quickly jumped into some mode where I went, kids not going, I was no one went to school, no one went to the, to, in my child, children's classes, no one went to school that day. And we went to my in-laws elsewhere in Germany. And what happened was, we had one Ukrainian uh, facilitator who was collaborating with me, one Ukrainian translator, uh, and one out of the blue stranded art therapist from Israel who had been trained in the same uh, uh, joint pa uh, painting procedure and was volunteering anyway. So she said, sure, I'll help with the facilitation. So I ended up being online while the three of them facilitated with uh, 12 mothers and uh, 13 children. Um, it was hard to collect data that way. It was not the way I planned, and we ended. I ended up getting the observations from the facilitators and um, the written um, descriptions from the mothers and children. But it was very interesting to see um, both the reactions of the facilitators and the mothers. The mothers that then came to the other workshops also um, talked about it. Um, how quickly just from seeing the work of the parent children of the mother and child together, there was a lot that was observed and very simply through saying, oh, you're sitting a little further away from your child. Maybe it's a little hard. Maybe you want to sit here was already a little intervention in terms of um, changing the perspective of the mother. Um, so this is, I didn't read, I'm sorry. I, I just want to rush through it, but this is the example that the facilitator um, reflected on. It was uh, the child was drawing in the corner of the painting and the mother was coming close to the child. And this mother later also in the workshop later on really reflected about it, about um, uh, how she noticed this, this dynamic. Um, I, it is hard because there are waiting lists and uh, it is very concerning to trigger anything. On the other hand, things are triggered all the time. People live in, in reality. Um, uh, so they received lists and connections if they wanted to have deeper um, uh, um, therapy about this, but unfortunately it's not always immediately available. Um, this is a little uh, view that you can have of what the mothers drew um, in their own session without the children. Um, this, and this is where I, I, I will sort of end with the, because um, there's a lot of data and a lot of interesting material that came out. Um, but what I really wanted to know on the very basic level was what the mothers say about those three sessions, which felt more helpful, comfortable, um, um, 
important to them. Did you do the other two sessions? I mean, you missed I the did, first one, but you, yeah, you... Uh, yeah, the other two were online. They were all, I started mid COVID, so they were all planned for online. And this first session changed to be in person and then became complicated after the 7th of October. I was there also on the 7th of, uh, on the, in the oh, yeah, yeah. and I was online. Yeah. Um, this was, despite it being a very basic level psychoeducational and a small, um uh exercise with drawing for the mothers somewhat triggering for the mothers so it was harder there were two mothers that cried um because we were talking about their wish for their child what they think their child needs and that immediately made them think of what their child does not have what they can't give them anymore um Maybe I bring one translation. This is from the translator. So it's, it's really from like December with the last workshop. I didn't have time to like paraphrase it properly. Um, uh, but one of the mothers with pride said she uh, she drew a house, a safe space. And she said that um, the blue thing on the right is swimming pool and that um, her family's always had to rent apartments. And then five years before the full scale war, they purchased a house, but unfortunately didn't get a chance to live there for very long. And the topic of moving is very big. So her wish for her child is stability in a sense of home. And just saying that made her upset uh, because she felt like trying to give her the sense of home. Um, it's not just a physical thing, but it is difficult for her. I'm paraphrasing a little bit, it's a little more. This was the drawing that she made. Um, and again, I won't have time to get into it a lot, but this was from the third session. This is the drawings the children drew of what a safe space for them is um, when drawing or when they think about art therapy. Um, so this is the, 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 the little bit of data that I wanted to bring, which is with the interesting thing in the survey afterwards when they were asked, uh, if they had a preference, which one was most significant to them from the, from the sessions, uh, definitely the first session was uh, chosen as the significant one. After that, the third session, and only one person said the second session. Uh, and we can talk about why it could be a deep discussion because, um, yeah, there are a lot of reasons. Uh, I don't know if that means that the second session is not important, but uh, there's a lot of research to about it. Um, I apologize for not because I want to bring the mother's words, but I do want to take two minutes to say maybe a word about myself and how this affected me. So I don't know if I can share. It's not worked enough to share the presentation, but I'll happily speak to you uh, a little more about the details if you want. What I want to say is also, as I've worked no, not only as an art therapist in Israel, I was also the psychosocial coordinator, professional coordinator. So I coordinated um, trainings and 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 uh, group support for the um, therapists and um, professional support. And there was one project that we had in uh, southern uh, Israel in uh, a place called Talmei Yosef, which was um, not as devastated as many of the other places, luckily, but they are not there. They were evacuated. And we had a project that was uh, happening there with an art therapist. Um, what you see is Gaza here. <laughs> this is me when I visited the project about three years ago. Um, unfortunately, um, Chen, she who, um, was one of the art therapists who worked there. Um, um, there were children who were right? There, there was at least one child who was murdered um, and they're, they're, they're evacuated. They're currently not there. Uh, it's very hard to bring these small snippets, but just to give you an idea why it's not very easy for me, this is from sort of an open studio that she made where you see the children doing art therapy there. And this is just a little, I practice what I preach. This is a bit of my art. Um, I found myself in the midst of researching um, after years of working with refugees and um, maybe just a small aspect. When I started working and I started slowly presenting more about my work and doing more uh, research oriented work, um, mm -hmm. until I started presenting, I didn't think of myself as a granddaughter of refugees or I didn't think of trauma. Not that I didn't have my own therapy or anything, but I just did the separation. Um, and I only thought of myself as a granddaughter of refugees once I presented about working with refugees. 
because the, 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 the concept wasn't used in the family. Um, I found myself as a mother of a baby um, with a movie that just came out, a very large documentary that just came out about my Holocaust surviving partisan grandfather in the midst of research. Um, it's hard to bring in a minute how much self-reflection this required, um, but it definitely has affected um, my, my outlook. I found myself in workshops with mothers talking about how difficult it is for them to create safety for their child, and I was identifying way more than I could ever imagine. Um, I think I'm going to leave it open like that. Maybe if there are questions, I can answer. Um, because I don't necessarily have a closing thing to say about it, other than it's work in progress, and um, and I hope to be able to share more with you. And I hope that um, through the work, parents can be supported a little more, and through working with parents, children as well. Thank you.